and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Charmaine and today we are doing the review for Sugar and Snow, the Irene Davis book that we were reading for December in the Page Turners Book Club. We do the Page Turners Book Club with Taylor Marie if you don't know about that. She is linked down in my description box all the time. She's permanently down there. So make sure that you check out her channel as well. So we have nine questions this time. Eight of them are actual questions and then we cast the characters. I am filming this after work, so I'm a little bit more spacey than normal because I was working all day. But if you don't know what this book is, I'm going to read the back to you and then I'm going to start the questions. It says, the Nutcracker is back, but so is the Mouse King, and now she must choose between them. No one believes Marie's story and her, about her magical journey with the Nutcracker Prince. She even started to doubt it herself. But when her brother Fritz brings home feller cavalry men home from the family's annual Christmas party and one of them demands to return the Mouse King's seven crowns to him, the Nutcracker finally appears, and the familiar batter lines are drawn, but is Marie on the same side as she that she was before? Okay, so, I think it's in here, but I think it asks you, like, about the book. It was amazing. It was so good. It was so good. I have the other two here. There's number two and number three. The Hawk and the Hound is number two, and then The Curse and the Crown is number three. I'm gonna be reading these, like, pretty much right away. <laughs> like, it was so good. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm very into Nutcracker retellings right now. That's what I've been about this year. Um, okay, I'm going to start the questions here. Number one, did you know the story of the nut Nutcracker before reading Sugar and Snow? Yes, I did because I've seen the movie. Like, Keira Knightley's in it. She plays, like, the Sugar Plum Fairy. I've seen that. Plus, I knew, like, the song. Like, everybody knows that song from Christmas, like, the Nutcracker Ballet song. So I knew that. What did you think of the retelling style? It was fantastic! She, the author, Irene Davis here, she did the best, like, most imaginative explaining of, like, the surroundings and, like, the, what was it, the dolls? The Land of the Dolls, I think? And then there was, like, a marzipan castle and she's explaining, like, these different, like, the way that the the swans look, the way that the rose water smell, like, the water smells like roses and it's, like, it's, dyed pink and like the swans come and like pull out their feathers to like cover Marie when she's sleeping that was like my favorite part <laughs> it was so good but how she explained like the the magicalness of it and like how the world is like totally different and just her visually explaining stuff in this book was insanely good I hope that she has like more books on this I'm actually gonna send her this video after I don't know if she'll watch it but I'm gonna send her this video after so that she can know that I think that her book was amazing because it was so good uh what was my favorite part of the book oh I just said that <laughs> my favorite part was when they because they were on the water it was her and the mouse king who's like Lang and they were on the water. Oh, by the way, there's spoilers in this video. Did I tell you guys that? I don't know. I always should, but like, I, I'll write it in the description so you guys can see it. But um, they they go on a boat and the boat is sinking and then there's swans in the water and the swans come over and help her. And she's talking about how like the swans take her to the, the shore so that she's okay. And then they let her use their little nest so that she can sleep. And they like pull out like the... Um, the feathers out of them so that she has like covers on top of her with the feathers and it reminded me of scene from Vampire Diaries if I can figure it out I'll like put the scene up here so you guys can see it but like Bonnie is like showing Elena that she has magic in the Vampire Diaries and she's like doing this and then there's like feathers floating in the air and it made me think of that so I was like oh I know what that looks like when she was talking about like the swans dropping the feathers on her so I thought that that was really cool and what's your least favorite part um I didn't really like the Nutcracker. Like, I mean, I liked his character as what he was supposed to be. But in my mind, like, I don't know. He was a little whiny. But he's supposed to be whiny. So, I mean, like, technically I did like him. But I didn't like him because of the fact that he was whiny. But technically that's what he's supposed to be. So, I mean, technically he was good. He, it was a good character. I just didn't like him because he was whiny. But I don't like whiny people. <laughs> there we are uh number four what surprised you most about the book how beautifully written it was and I mean like that's like not a surprise but it was so graphically beautiful I don't know how to like the scenery sounded so graphically beautiful in my mind and like when I read the book becomes like a movie in my mind so I'm very very good at seeing like what the author is describing if they're good at describing it and Irene Davis did an amazing job like such a cool 
such a cool visually stunning book. Amazing, amazing. Number five is how did the setting impact the story? I think I just answered that. Like the setting was so good. It was so good. And like the storyline was good. The characters made me happy. Um, considering it's only 207 pages, it was wrapped up nicely where I didn't feel like it was too rushed or anything like that, which I also enjoyed. Um, what did you think of the romance? I thought it was sweet. <laughs> That's, I thought it was really, really nice. She, cause like, obviously it's like, I don't know, in like the 1700s or something. I don't even know if she says that in there. She could have, I'm not sure. But it's like the olden times where like women and men weren't allowed to be like alone together or like holding hands or anything like that. And like, um, so again, there's spoilers in this, but like the Mouse King's her first kiss. And then when they're back in like the real world, he's like holding her hand underneath the table. And she's like, I think that my sister knows that we're holding hands. Like she's like in her inner monologue. And then she's like, but I'm okay with that. And they're like holding hands under the table. And I thought that was cute. It was really sweet. Number seven, are there any areas that you wish the author had ex elaborated upon further? Um, not really. I think it was a good story. Plus I have two and three. So like I have more right here that's going to be further. So I'm excited for that. Also, thank you to my friend Karen for buying me those. It's amazing. Um, number eight, what did you think of the ending? I cannot wait to read the second book. That's what I think. It was so good. I cannot wait to see what happens because it kind of like it ends with him going off to do like because he's um, I can't think of what they were called, but they're like lieutenants. Like they're in the army. So he's going to do army stuff. So he's going to go in army and then he's going to come back. So when he, like they're already excited for when he comes back in the spring. So that's pretty neat. Okay. So now I have cast the characters. So for, I have to tell you guys the whole entire time, I'm like starting out of line, but the whole entire time I was reading this book, I was thinking of um, Lieutenant Lang as Aaron Taylor Johnson from this one movie. Was it Anna Karenina? Was that what it was from? I don't even know. I'll put it up here. He's blonde and he has like this like wiry mustache. It was the only face that I could picture, but it would only be the way that he looked in that movie. Like the way that he looked in that movie is exactly how I pictured Lang in my head. And like even how like the author describes him, I'm pretty sure that's exactly who was like, I mean, I don't know her. I don't know if that's exactly who she was thinking of, but I'm telling you right now, when you see his photo, you'll be like, that's who it is. Because I, there was nobody else I could picture like as that. He's even in Anna Karenina, I think he's wearing like some kind of lieutenant's outfit. Again, I'll put the pictures up here so you guys can see. So for me, that was him. I think I've seen that movie once, but I just remember his mustache and he has blonde hair in it. And normally the actor is a brunette. Picture up here, maybe. But yeah, so I had to like put that because as soon as I started reading it and like she described him, I was like, oh, that's that guy from that movie. Like, that's exactly who I thought. And so the whole time I was thinking of him. OK, so that was out of line because he's near the bottom. But for Marie, I had Elle Fanning. She is Dakota Fanning's like little sister, but she's very delicate in the features. So I figured that she would suit. For Fritz, I had Kyle Gallner. Fritz is Marie's brother. So I don't know. I've seen him. In a couple of movies, I actually saw him in Scream 5 most recently, but kind of the way that Fritz talks, that kind of makes me think of like Kyle, like the language that they use maybe. No, I don't know if I'm saying that right. The way that they speak, that, that kind of made me think of him. Then for Clara, okay, so this actress now is 23, but when I first saw her, she was like tiny, like eight or six. And her name is Morgan Lily. She's just little. She has like the cutest little face. So I thought of her because I was looking up actresses who are like younger, but it always shows like actresses who are in the 20s who like used to work when they were young. So, but I think that this girl would suit. She was in like 2012, I think the movie was called. It was like some kind of world disaster movie, but she has such a cute little face and such a cute little like voice. She would be perfect for Clara, I think. Then Trudy, I, cause I cast Marie as a blonde. I don't know what they looked like in the book. Like, I don't remember. She did describe them, but I don't remember what they described like as. So I went with Marie being a blonde. And then because Trudy's her best friend, I went with her being a brunette because, you know, can't have two blondes in the same movie, I guess, is how I think of it. <laughs> so I went with Landry Bender. I don't know who she is. She just looked really pretty when the actresses who were younger came up. And I was like, oh yeah, she looks like Trudy. 
So there's the picture up there. And then for Godfather Drosselmeyer, we have Anthony Hopkins. Because he's a little creepy. And the Godfather Drosselmeyer, a little creepy. So I thought that suit. And then for hair Drosselmeyer, I have Dylan Minette. So Dylan is also in Scream. I, <laughs> honestly, I watched Scream 5 recently. And a lot of these people, I was watching it while I was reading this book. And a lot of these people, I was like, ooh, that's fitting. Ooh, that's fitting. Ooh, that's fitting. So I just think that they like suited. And like, for the Kyle one, for Fritz, he also had like the little mustache. I wonder if they would all have that. Like, would that be like a dress code in the army? I don't know. I don't know. Because I know for a fact that Lang had the mustache because it tickled Marie's hand when he kissed her hand. So I know for sure that there was a mustache there. So in my mind, as I put Fritz up here, he also has the mustache, right? So like, maybe that's like an army thing. So yeah, so what did you guys think about this book? Oh my gosh, I hope you guys got to read it. I know, um, I don't think that a lot of people, I don't think it was in the library because it's an independently published one. So I'm not 100% sure if you would have been able to find it if you went to your library to find it. I originally got it on the Stuff Your Kindle Day. I got it for free. And then I ended up reading like the first chapter of it. It was the first book that I had read out of like the hundred stuff your Kindle books that I got. It was the first book that I had read and I read the first chapter and I was like, oh snap, I need to buy this. So like I bought it for myself. Then I added these two into my wish list and then Karen got them for me. Thank you, Karen. So I ended up with like the whole series, but it's so good. I cannot wait to see what Taylor thinks. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so for January's book, which is coming up next week. Oh, today is the 15th when I'm filming this. So it's the... 16th, 17th, 18th when you're watching it. <laughs> Math and I don't go. We're not like this. No, no. We're like this. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be, I don't know, seven days after the 18th. I want to do that math for you guys, but you, you guys saw my math face just now. I don't have that, but whatever day that is. So it'll be like January and then like the beginning of February's book kind of, because we, we take about five weeks with it. So really it's kind of going to be February's book. So then maybe in March we'll go for a romance. I don't know, because we read like two more rom romances in a row. Homegirl needed a break. Anyways, um, we're doing Odd Thomas for the next one. Just so you guys know what it is, okay? I got mine on Audible. Like, so I'm going to be listening to the audiobook. You can buy it online and 100% you can get it at your library. So check there if you guys can't find it, because you can probably find it there. I also think like if you have thrift books or anything like that, like you can find like a used copy pretty easy, I think. So next week we'll be doing our treats because we're not going to have the week where we like announce the book because technically we've announced it a couple of times just so you guys know what's happening. Like we've been announcing it for like a month now. So we're just going to go into the treats next month or next week. So that's it. Okay. Let me know if you read this book. Let me know if you're going to read Odd Thomas. Let me know how your day is going. Let me know what's new with you. Let me know what's happening. Make sure that you check out Taylor's video. I cannot wait to, wait to see what she says because I think that she's going to like it as well. Because it, like, it had some cute romantic moments, but, like, honestly, the scenery. The scenery of the book made it for me. Like, Irene Davis did an amazing job at describing this book. I'm just saying. Fantastic. Okay. Please like this video and subscribe if you want to and turn on the notification bell because I do post sporadically, as I like to badly sing now at the end of these videos. <laughs> Check out my description box for, as for other content creators as well. One day I'll get that right, but, like, not anytime soon, I don't think, because every time I try and say it, I mess it up. Anyways, thank you guys so much for spending a couple minutes of your day with me today. I really, really appreciate that. And I really, really appreciate you. And I'll see you in my next video. Oh, by the way, just in case you guys aren't paying attention, I am playing Bleat the Beat the Blues on my community tab. So make sure that you check that out. The prizes aren't like every single day, but there is going to be some prizes in there. Okay, that's it. Bye. We have been having these really, really, really gorgeous sunsets and sunrises. And I'm just loving how it looks all pastel-y. And I wanted to show you guys. Okay, bye.